Hey everybody, this is round three of my playthrough of Local Heroes in the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path of the Pathfinder adventure card game. We have just uh, recently closed a location with Sioni, and so it is Valeros' turn now, and the only two locations left... Well, we've closed the general store and the waterfront, which was absolutely brutal. And so we've got the woods and the academy. As I said at the end of the previous uh, session, the academy is a pretty safe space. There's only one monster there. Um, and that is great for Sione, I feel, because she's on something like zero health points. She's got nothing left in her draw deck. Whereas Valeros has some cards left in his draw deck and is also a warrior built for fighting. The woods is a dangerous place. And so that's where I'm going to send him. Let's learn more about the woods first. Gnarled and twisted branches support a shadowy forest canopy that allows only enough light to encourage the growth of, of stinging nettles and other poisonous plants. Despite the tangled plants, swift, sly things dart through the underbrush, but whether they are curious creatures of the woods or hungry predators is difficult to tell. I have a feeling we'll soon find out. Let's see if there's any special rules here. So at this location, undefeated monsters other than villains or henchmen are banished. That's great. That means technically we don't have to defeat them. I mean, he'll take damage if he doesn't defeat them, probably, but that is nice to know. They get an appearance, and then they go away. When closing, succeeded a Wisdom or Survival 6 check. Well, does he have... No, that's Sioni's deck. Does he have any ally to help with that? Yeah, he has a guide who can add a d10. So as long as we keep this guide handy, uh, we could actually close that location without too much, of a, without too much trouble. So I'm going to send Valeros to the woods, but first, of course, I need to increment the timer deck. Uh, we're still doing all right on the timer deck. Not great. Three, six, eight. So we have, well, including this one, nine more turns. And we have a lot more than nine cards in the locations. And the win condition here is to close locations. If you close all of the locations, then you win. If you do not close them, then we have not beat the scenario. Okay. That's a lot of pressure. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this is a lot of pressure. Let's find out what happens. Uh, so it's Valeros. We've already incremented or decremented the timer deck, I guess. Valeros, of course, finds an item that he probably has no chance of getting. A wisdom or divine check. Uh, his wisdom is a d4. There is no way he's going to get an 8 on a d4. Well, I say there's no way, but we should look. No, there is no way. He's got nothing to help him with that. Holy water. Great for sanctifying and, and consecrating uh ground uh no good so that's just banished back to the box now he um technically can't do anything except he could discard this guide to explore problem is i happen to know that i need this guide to close that location so i, I guess i'm gonna hold on uh, i'll just i'll just wait i'll bide my time and and hope that Sioni fares really, really well at the Academy. That's that's my best hope right now. So I'm incrementing the timer deck, and uh, let's learn more about the Academy. The Academy serves as a place of learning. That's what an Academy is. For those who study the deeper secrets of the world, whether the wonders of the modern world, forgotten histories, or the mysteries of the arcane arts. Wise professors are always willing to share their counsel with those who take the time to listen, and wily students will often sell a scroll or two to those who know, who know how to ask. At this location, 
on your first exploration on a turn, if you encounter anything other than a spell, then you can explore again. Well, that's really good. That's going to help a lot, I hope. Uh, succeed in an intelligence or arcane check. Oh, that's easy. So when closing this, Sioni has, has that taken care of. Okay, so first exploration is a spell, so she's not going to get free exploration, but she does get to attempt to acquire a new spell, which is exciting. So she's going to roll her arcane die. She has a plus two naturally on that. It doesn't even matter because she rolled a six. All she needed was a six. So this goes back into her hand, or, or into her hand, rather. So, as usual, she has too many cards now, because that's what happens when you gain stuff into your hand. So, um, let's read Speed and find out what that does. Discard this card and select a character. For the rest of the turn, add three to that character's checks that use Dexterity. Well, Sioni doesn't have to discard spells. She's a sorceress. One of her special abilities is to automatically succeed at a recharge check for spells. So, I will recharge this. I guess I'm kind of stuck here, really. I mean, I could... I mean, we have to get through these locations. So I guess what I'm going to do is... Is, um... I, I just hate to discard any card from Sioni's hand right now. Because, yeah, but I guess she, I, I kind of have to. So I guess I'm going to discard this this standard bearer. Seems counter to my goal here is my, is my issue. But if I discard, then I get to explore again, which that's, and what, what is it? If so if I, if I encounter anything other than a spell, I get to explore again. Okay, cool. Well, this is not a spell. This is an item. It's a codex. Discard this card to add one die to your check to acquire a boon. Or or succeed at an intelligence knowledge 10, well, she'll never do that, to recharge instead of discarding. Okay, so that's not bad. Intelligence knowledge. So intelligence for her is a d6, and this requires an 8 to acquire, so that is impossible. But she does get to explore again for free, because that wasn't a spell, and she's in the academy. This one is a spell, so she will not get to explore again, uh, unless I discard another card, but I don't think I'm going to do that. And this requires an arcane check of 2. Well, her arcane bonus is a 2, so even if she rolls a 1 on her d12, she gets to acquire this card. So that's really good. So she's got 6 in her hand, she doesn't have to draw again, which is great. A lot of these are spells, so that she can just recharge those again and again and again. Um, so that's good, I guess. Yep, that's good. No, it's definitely good. Uh, what, what does this do? Discard this card to allow a character at your location to discard a weapon, armor, or an item and take a card of that type from the discard pile into their hand. That's huge, actually. So huge that I kind of feel like maybe she should just do that. So discard the card. Well, okay, sure. She's a sorceress. She doesn't discard. She recycles, or she recharges, whatever it's called. Uh, and then she can rescue a, what is it, any card? Or to, uh, oh, okay, so, oh, oh, they have to discard a weapon or armor to get a card of that type from, oh, okay, well, that's less exciting. It's just actually, it's not, it's trading. I mean, that's still good. It could be good for something. Because if Valeros, for instance, has... Oh, he has two long swords. Okay, now I'm back back in the game. Uh, discard this card to allow a character at your location. Okay. Oh, well. So she would have to travel over to the woods to give him that power to then discard, like, a long sword. Oh, yeah, and she loses her dexterity bonus because now the turn's over. To discard the long sword to go dig up that bastard sword, which is like a plus d10, which actually would be really, really useful, but I don't think I want to send her to the woods. Well, either way, it's not her turn now, so we're incrementing a blessing card. We're exploring for Valeros, and it's a monster. The plague zombie is immune to mental and poison, that's fine. If defeated, or it, rather, if undefeated, it doesn't actually matter. If undefeated, this uh, creature 
gets banished, so that sort of doesn't matter. But, I mean, he still has to fight it, so of course he's got his old reliable D10, he's got his natural uh, 3 melee bonus, and he's got a D8 for his longsword here that he's revealing. So he needs a... Let's see, he's got, he's got a 3, so... Well, okay, so we'll just add it all up. 3... Six, eight, <laughs> that's, yep, no, eight, uh, that is more than 11, and so this plague zombie is dead, or undead, but destroyed, it's destroyed is what it is. Unfortunately, of course, this also means that that turn is over. And we, we are seriously, seriously running low. I mean, I don't honestly see how we can possibly beat... I, I don't see how this is going to be really possible at all. So I guess given that... Given that um, sort of reality, I guess I'm going to discard this so that he can explore again. Because otherwise we just were... I mean, there's really no way to get through all these cards... Uh, given our time constraints. Short bow. I have a feeling that... No, he's got a fighting chance for this, yeah. So, because his dex is plus 8. No, it's a d8. It's not plus 8. 6. To acquire a short bow, he has acquired uh, the short bow. That's good, because now he doesn't have to draw up for what he had just discarded. But, unfortunately, he doesn't get any more draw- he doesn't get to explore anymore. So that's too bad. Let's see, so now my- my quandary is whether I want to send her to the- f to the woods and have her explore and potentially come up against some horrible monster, which, frankly, she'll probably be well-equipped to deal with. Yeah, I think that's probably the smart thing to do. I kind of wanted her to hang out at the academy and just keep drawing cool items to sort of bolster her. But, once again, given... Well, you know what, and, yeah, and there's that, there's that free exploration thing. But you know what, whether she does that now or whether she does that later doesn't really matter. So, okay, I've decided. Taking a Blessing card from the timer deck, moving Sioni up to that location. She is going to... Is she going to do anything? Oh yes, she's going to cast Mending. She's going to recharge Mending. So, so that... Valeros can discard one of his two long swords, which I think is just a little bit of... That's one too many long swords. So he's going to discard that, and then we're going to look through his discard deck, find his uh, another uh, another weapon, another card of the weapon type, and in this case, of course, I'm selecting Bastard Sword, which is a D10, which is pretty good. Now, that's a two-handed weapon. So that actually means that uh, when he, if he, if he needs to use his shield, he can't because he's got a two-handed weapon. So that's something to keep in mind. If Sioni can cast mending again at some point, then he can discard his armor and rescue his chainmail, and then swing his two-handed sword all he wants. But for now, he is, he's just using a sword, if I use that bastard sword. Okay, so now Sioni is going to do her exploration phase. This is a cultist. There's a little thing about how undefeated... There's an undefeated condition, but from what I'm... Mm, actually, you know what? Yeah, I wonder if that power still actually does... No, if undefeated. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to defeat it, so... Okay, so Sioni's up here. So this is her arcane die, of course. It's a d12. She gets a natural plus the two to her arcane skill. She is going to be using her force missile 
to give her... Actually, should she use that? Because she's going to get a free D4. Free D4 from Valeros anyway. And then she's got her Arcane die. She can't really afford to not succeed. But does she have armor? She, I think she has her Bracers of Protection on. Yeah, she does. So she can absorb one point of damage. I think I'm going to risk it. This sounds crazy, but I'm just going to go for it. So that's a 5 total. So she needs to roll a 4 or more on her d12. And she rolls an 8. So no worries. Cultist is destroyed. Now, unfortunately, um, I have no... Well, I do have this guide, which I could discard to continue to explore. Which, again, seems really risky. We'll, we'll bring Sioni down to zero HP again, essentially. Um, but that would let her explore. And to sort of close this location, what do we need? We need a Wisdom or Survival 6. That is not going to work. I mean, I they need a guide. It's just, unfortunately, neither of them have a very good Wisdom. And if I have to spend more than one round, more than one round um, trying to close a location, then that defeats the purpose anyway. So oh, what am I doing? Uh, okay, so I'm drawing back up to six, incrementing the draw deck. It's Valeros's turn, so he'll explore. He finds a potion of energy resistance, and that's an intelligence check. Well, his intelligence 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 isn't half bad. It's a d6, d6. So he's got a fighting chance to get a 4, but he rolled a 2, so he does not gain that. There's three more cards in the woods, and there are four more timer cards. Oh uh, boy. Let's see, are there any blessings in the wood at all? In the woods? No, there are no blessings there. Okay, I'm starting to revise my strategy here. Oh, there's no blessings in the academy either. But I, I believe there's only sadness in the woods. So it might be better to take our chances at the Academy, because there might be something that can help rescue time somehow. So I guess I'm going to flip over another timer card, send Sioni back to the Academy, and have her explore there in hopes of finding something useful. This is an ally, so we'll get to explore again because of the condition for the academy where if you don't uh, if you're not encountering a spell you get to explore again so she's got an arcane wait is this arcane or yeah charisma and diplomacy so she's got a plus 2 to her diplomacy and she rolled an 11 to acquire the ally so she has now acquired the ally and now she gets to explore again for free because that wasn't a spell here's another ally this is great this is good this is exactly why we're at the Academy. Uh, once again, the Charisma Diplomacy. So let's... Um, eight. Uh, she's just acquired another ally. Uh, and she gets to explore again for free because that wasn't a spell. Detect Magic. That is a spell. Arcane to acquire. Two. Arcane two. Um... Arcane 2, she has a bonus of 2, so even if she rolls a 1 on her d12, she gets this card. This is a super great spell. It's, um, it's essentially a scry spell, a scry spell if, if you are familiar with Magic the Gathering. Uh, you get to discard this to examine the top card of the, of the deck. So that's really, really useful. It's so darn useful. In fact, I think we're just going to spend it right now. So we recharge it, and we get to just... Take a peek. Uh, it's another spell under there, so that's good to know. I don't get to explore for free because I just encountered a spell. But what I can do is discard these two allies to explore one two more times. I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it one at a time. But um, so I'll discard the Night Watch so that we can explore. It's a spell, so we don't get to explore for free. It's a Wisdom Divine check, and Sioni doesn't have the Divine trait, 
Okay, so just discarded the Sage for a free exploration round. This is a spell, so we don't get to explore again for free. It's an arcane check to get a fiery weapon. This could be good, a good little boost for, um, you know, for her to help out Valeros. It's an arcane check of six. Of course, she's already got a free two, so she needs to do a four on a d4 or better. She got a four, so she acquires this spell. That's really nice. Okay. So we got three, four, five, six, seven cards in our hand. That's We can't do that at the end of our turn. We can't end with more cards in our hand than we're allowed. Um, so she could, let's see, she could discard this to add 1d4 to a combat check using a weapon. I guess what she'll do is she'll discard speed, which of course for her just means recharge. And she'll cast speed on Valeros. And the only reason that I'm doing that is to get that card out of my hand without discarding it. Anyway, that's I think that's all I can do here. But, I mean, that really whittled down that deck. There are now two cards at the Academy. Three cards in the woods. Three cards remaining in the timer deck. It's still looking very... Um, dicey but fighting chance maybe okay so that was sioni i almost want to send valeros down to the academy to try to get a free a free turn or something but i don't think it's gonna matter i guess i guess no we can't we can't recharge this yeah okay yeah, we can't recharge either of the allies. I would love to get the allies out of my out of my hand right now, but I guess that's just not possible. Okay, but there is this fiery there's this fiery weapon card, and it says discard this card to add a d4 to the fire trait to a combat check using a weapon. And that to me sounds like I can cast that out of turn. If someone is going into combat with 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 a weapon, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Okay, so we are expending one of our timer cards. Valeros is exploring, and he encounters a an ally. That's really good because that's going to be a free exploration if we acquire it. Charisma diplomacy. I think Valeros has a pretty good chance at that. There's a Charisma D6. Diplomacy is plus two. So he needs a six. Oh, wait. What else could we do? Wisdom Perception. Okay, never mind. So a D6 plus two to get a six. Well, that exactly is what we needed. Rolled a four, got it at plus, plus two, equals six. That's, that's, the, that's the DC to acquire this card. So um, we acquire the ally. We discard the ally to check uh, to to for a free exploration it's a goblin snake before the encounter succeed at a constitution or fortitude six check where the difficulty of the check is increased by one for the rest of the turn okay constitution don't know what that is for valero so let's let's find out constitution is a d8 He's a hearty fellow. Two. So that's a fail. So um, this is a, a nine difficulty for this combat. Well, I'm not too concerned, I guess. I mean, it's the bastard sword plus the strength melee. Well, plus the strength and then plus three for the melee. So... 9 minus 3 is 6, so I'm looking for a 6 on 2d10. There's a 4, so that's not a terrible start. And a 3, so 7 uh, plus 3 is 10. That beats 9, so the goblin snake is dead. That's good. So now we've got one more card in the woods. And two more in the academy. And only 
two more cards in our timer deck, which I'm expending right now, because Sioni's turn. Okay, so she's going to explore. I mean, I don't see what else she can do. And it's a barrier. But that's okay, because that means she gets to explore for free afterwards. If defeated, you may ex immediately explore again. If undefeated, um, each location at this location is dealt 1d4 combat damage. Well, she's got a little bit of armor on her. Let's see what she can do. She's got wisdom or dexterity to choose from. Does she have that stupid speed spell, or did I use it up? I used it up. Look at that. That's awfully, awfully disappointing. <laughs> That's the point of the speed spell. Got it. Understand now. Okay, so she needs to succeed. Well, she's going to... I have a feeling we're going to need these bracers of protection. Uh, pit trap. Why is there a pit trap at the academy? Uh, dexterity. So her dexterity, I believe, is an 8... A D8, rather. Yep, it is. It's a D8. So she rolled a 4. That's not great. Um, so she fails. If undefeated, each character is at this location 1D4 combat damage. So 2. 2 points of combat damage. Well, she could cast either Bracers of Protection, or she, rather she could use Bracers of Protection, or she could cast Mirror Image. And if you are, oh, if you're dealt damage by a monster during your turn. This is not a monster, this is a barrier. Bracers recharge this to reduce combat damage. This was not combat damage, it was a barrier. So it sounds like we're going to have to discard two cards, whether we like it or not. Uh, so I guess I'll get rid of the burglar and the fiery weapon. So that's two cards down for her, which puts her straight back where she start. Oh wait, we don't get to just draw. Um... Yeah, so she's down a couple of cards. The The good news is that this goes away, and we get to explore again for free, and it's a monster. That's I'm not too concerned about that. She's got... She's, she's well equipped for that. So, Force Missile. She can recharge her Force Missile for uh, a D... What is it? A D12 and two D4. This is a Rat Swarm. So it requires an 8. So that's, she's already got, of course, her plus 2 for Arcane. And then she's got 2d4. So that's 2, 4, 7, uh, 5, 2, 4, uh, so 7. So she can't roll less than a 1 on a d12. So she succeeds. She rolled a 1. But she still succeeds. So this is now dead. Okay, so we're clear. With one card, literally one card in our timer deck left, we turn over the card. It is Valeros's turn. There's no way he can close this look. Oh wait, she can close this location though. Uh, when when closing, succeed at an intelligence or arcane six check. Intelligence or Arcane? Uh, I think I'll take Arcane, thanks. So she's got a plus two for Arcane. A Twelve, she closes that location. Okay, so I mean this is probably, the, I mean this is definitely the end game. And well, so what is it? Three, four, five, six. That's really something though. Like if you look, if you look at her discard deck from the academy was down at what zero before I started this round, and and I just drew three cards from it, plus one. So we essentially healed Sioni four four points by going to the academy. So that that strategy at least made sense. Like that that worked, which is kind of satisfying. Um, unfortunately. We are we are now out of timer cards. So at this point, Valeros explores, encounters a merchant from oh an actual merchant from from Rise of the Rune Lords. I thought this was another uh, Shackles and Skulls uh, card that I was playing with. Uh, the default the, the difficulty to defeat the mercenaries increased by the adventure deck. Okay, 
So instead of 10, it's actually 11. Uh, so Valeros is going to battle with um, a head start of 3 for his melee skill. He will reveal his Bastard Sword for an extra d10. It honestly doesn't really matter whether he wins this or not because we're in the woods and you only encounter a monster once in the woods and then they get banished whether you defeat them or not. Uh, looking not bad, so that's... Oh, actually, that's a 9, so that it's looking great because... Um, so he's just defeated the the mercenary. I don't know why the mercenary what what problem the mercenary has with Valeros. Maybe he was hired by someone who has beef with Valeros. Uh, the difficulty to defeat is increased. Yeah, so that's that's success. And the this it it comes down to one roll. So when closing, succeeded a wisdom or survival six. Valeros has. A wisdom of a d4. There's no way he can, he, he can't win. He can't, he cannot close this location. So, there is really no recourse. I mean, that's it. That's, that's the, that's the end. He can roll a d4. I guarantee you it's not going to be a six. It isn't, it's a two. So he fails to close the location. And we're out of the timer deck. And so uh, we have not completed, we have not beat this scenario, unfortunately, very sadly. If I had, then each character draws a random ally from the box. But I didn't. I did not complete this, this scenario. So we will move on to the next scenario. It's not, you know, it's not locked physically like we can we can just keep playing but i'm not going to take that reward obviously so local heroes not a victory trouble at sandpoint trouble in sandpoint is the next one that sounds like a like possibly maybe it'll be kind of tough actually so trouble in sandpoint probably sounds like another attack or something and um yeah, I think they, I, you know, I think we put up a good fight. I, I just think that we, we, we overstepped. I think probably what happens we is I, co un, I didn't coordinate correctly at one point. I, I can't put my finger on where I should have had. I mean, obviously, Sioni should have ended up in the woods, like unquestionably, because then she could have given him given um, Valeros an extra d10 to his survival check. And that's what I needed, right? For the for the woods, I think? Yeah, survival six. So if, if, if I'd managed to give Valeros the guide, then he would have had an extra d10. And that would have done it. See, a five and a two would have closed that location and I would have succeeded. But when I had sent, when I sent Sioni up to the woods for like one turn, she had cast Mending, which was great because that got him the Bastard Sword, but she should have given him the guide and then he could have, um, he could have used the guide in his check. So as you can see from this playthrough, um, there are subtleties there are there are moments where you can where where you can literally i mean it's 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 the winning or the losing of the game and that timer deck is brutal as you can tell like it does not slow down for anybody uh so a as much as you can get more turns within each turn eat more actions within each turn the better and and look i mean Valeros had four cards still in his deck, which I think was a big mistake on my part. Um, one of them was a blessing, so he could have expended that for a for an extra turn to to sort of give us a little bit of timer, a little bit of lenience with that timer. So, yeah, there were some there were some choices that I clearly did not make uh, uh, the best that they could have been made during that round. The 
the plus side is that I got a bunch of new cards to choose from for Sioni. So she's going to come back with a, a different set of spells, probably. I mean, a slightly different set of spells. And Valeros has some cool new weapons as well. Like that bastard sword is great. I'm not playing it like a video game or whatever where you didn't succeed this this objective so you don't get to proceed. I'm just going to proceed on to the next one, which, as I say, is Trouble in Sandpoint. So I'll start that one next time.